Why does the Mormon Church potentially have your name and the names of your relatives filed away in records behind bomb-proof doors? What are they doing with that information? Who does it serve? Are they conspiring against you? What are they planning? Why are they so secretive? Well, they're not actually. They're completely transparent as to why they exert so much time, energy, and money to create one of the world's largest compendiums of genealogical information. Just as a heads up, I am not a member of the Mormon Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm not associated with them in any way, but I just wanted to do a small story on an interesting place here in Little Cottonwood Canyon, about 25 miles southeast of Salt Lake City. Since 1840, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been compiling birth, death, marriage, immigration records, as well as deeds, land grants, and parish and cemetery information, as well as censuses, and a whole myriad of other different records, in a dozens of different forms for the purpose of establishing a database from which members of its church can research their ancestors and record significant events. They began converting these physical records to microfilm in 1938, but the gathering of a mass of documents, even in microfilm form, was starting to grow to a point that security became a concern due to the potential destruction of decades of work by those aggregating everything. The Granite Mountain Records Vault here was the answer to that. It's a massive storage facility located in the Wasatch Mountains near Salt Lake City, Utah built in the 1960s by the church in order to protect and preserve its genealogical records, including millions of rolls of microfilmed records and hundreds of thousands of original documents. Since 1999, the records have been converted to digital form while still maintaining the physical records here in the vault. The records vault is located inside a 600 foot tunnel dug into solid granite, devoid of moisture and is protected by several layers of security including reinforced concrete walls, environmental systems, dust scrubbers, and state-of-the-art fire suppression systems. It is designed to withstand earthquakes, nuclear attacks, mob attack, pillaging, and other disasters that could potentially destroy the 1.5 acres of underground records. To the question of why does the Church of Latter-day Saints need to have this massive archive of genealogical records, and why put so much energy to constantly updating and protecting it? Well, within the church, there are several tenets that are adhered to in order to ensure someone may enter the afterlife appropriately. In particular, this is to receive the saving ordinances and baptism. But what can you do if you are a member of the church and someone you think may have wanted to be a member, such as a family member, passed away before receiving the ordinances? Well, one of the main purposes of the record stored in the vault is to facilitate the LDS Church's doctrine of baptism by proxy. This doctrine allows deceased ancestors of church members to be baptized on their behalf. Those who were not able to receive the ordinance of baptism during their lifetime can receive it after death. The church believes this helps the ancestors progress in the afterlife and allows them to enter the highest level of heaven, known as the celestial kingdom. The church also states that it does not automatically enter the deceased individual into the church, but allows them to make a choice to do so in the afterlife. And that information is key because baptism by proxy can be a bit contentious, which I'll discuss in a minute. To perform a baptism by proxy, church members must first do genealogical research to find their deceased ancestors and determine the names and other vital information. They can use the records in the Granite Mountain Records Vault, as well as other genealogical resources, to verify the information and prepare for the baptism. The actual baptism by proxy is performed in a temple of the LDS Church by a living member of the church acting as a proxy for the deceased ancestor. The proxy is fully immersed in water while saying the appropriate words and using the ancestor's name. The church believes that this ordinance is then applied to the ancestor in the afterlife, allowing them to receive the blessings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The LDS Church places a great emphasis on performing baptisms by proxy, as it believes that it is a vital part of its divine mission to offer the blessings of the gospel to all of God's children, both living and deceased. The Granite Mountain Records Vault plays a crucial role in this mission, as it helps church members to accurately identify and verify the names of their deceased ancestors so that they can be properly baptized by proxy. Where this has become an issue in the past, though, 
is that certain temples have taken it upon themselves to baptize anyone who they may deem culturally relevant and not just the ancestors of living members of the church. This includes most of the U.S. presidents, the founding fathers of the United States, most of the popes, Gandhi, Buddha, and even Albert Einstein and Christopher Columbus. But at the same time, controversial people to include Hitler, Stalin, and Genghis Khan have also been found to have been baptized by proxy in the past. This isn't to say that the church supports what these individuals have done, but possibly some members of leadership in some outlying temples have determined that everyone, despite their deeds on earth, should be given a chance to choose faith once in the afterlife. It has been made clear that the baptisms are allowed without consideration of age, gender, race, or moral or ethical behavior while alive. And like I said, this act can be contentious. Additionally, the biggest controversy occurred when it was discovered that both victims as well as certain perpetrators of the Holocaust had been baptized by proxy in some temples. This caused a bit of an outcry amongst Jewish organizations, and in particular amongst the Jewish Holocaust survivors. It would later be found that Anne Frank had been baptized by proxy approximately nine times due to various temples taking it upon themselves to conduct the service. In the years that followed this, the church has officially stated that it will ensure that those who wish to conduct a baptism by proxy will do so specifically for individuals in their family tree and will seek permission from relatives of the deceased if they have passed within the last 95 years. They have also stated that due to the sensitivity of the nature, they will remove from records anyone who may have been improperly baptized and further reinforce the policies as laid out by their faith and congregation. The church is made available to anyone who may want to search through their records a website and access to the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. This is almost like a free version of Ancestry.com and my family has used it to find documents from our family as they came through Ellis Island and in the years that followed. It is an extensive and well-curated compilation of literally billions of records, and if you're interested in your heritage, would be a good, free place to start your research. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, get lost.